Apart from being the opening verse of my high school song, my first slide is in the nature of a disclaimer. To set the stage for the start of Itasca, I must go back further than 40 years and will forgetfully wonder even more. There were many colleagues who have played important roles in the development of Itasca, but I can't acknowledge all, so please accept my apologies. The October 5th, 1957 launch of Sputnik 1 opened the era of outer space, but groups were also concerned about inner space, the subsurface. In 1959, Leopold Muller started the Salzburg Group. In 1962, this group evolved into the International Society for Rock Mechanics. Muller's specific concern was that large-scale discontinuities play a dominant role in rock mass behavior and engineers did not understand how to take these discontinuities into account in design. I had arrived at the University of Minnesota in June 1956 to start research on how to penetrate taconite, a very hard iron ore. In 1957, I was given an added challenge to develop a PhD program in rock mechanics. About 1958, Ingvar Janolid, professor of mining at KTH, the Royal Swedish Institute in Stockholm, visited Minnesota. Seeing my rock drilling lab, he commented, I think you should contact Hans Christian Fischer. He is a physics professor at Uppsala University. I did go to, Fisch, to Sweden and met Professor Fischer. We were indeed on the same research track and developed a lasting friendship. I also met engineers at Atlas Kopko as well as the leading Swedish rock engineer, Stan Bergman. I also met his son, Magnus, a civil engineer who was active in publicizing the work of Swedish rock engineers. Stockholm is an archipelago with considerable areas of water from the Baltic and many islands of high quality granite. Sweden was caught in the potential line of fire between the US and the Soviet Union. It was making remarkable use of its granite subsurface to protect the population as well as its military against hostilities. The first OPEC oil embargo from 1973 to 74 caused alarm in Minnesota. Minnesota winters would be intolerable without fuel. UMN faculty described that summer winter temperature extremes were moderated at shallow depths. At two meters, for example, the ground remains above freezing and at 10 meters, the temperature is constant at 52 degrees Fahrenheit or 11 degrees Celsius year round. This led to a visit to Stockholm by the Legislative Commission on Minnesota Resources in 1980. Commission members were impressed. On a visit to Dr. Hook's research group at Imperial College around 1969 to 70, I met then graduate student Peter Condell and quickly recognized that his approach to analyzing discontinuities in rock engineering was by far the most powerful. I offered Peter a position as assistant professor at the university. He joined the faculty in 1973 and submitted a proposal for a one-year grant of $75,000 to the National Science Foundation to develop his discrete element method. Remarkably, it was rejected. Reviewers apparently considered the proposal too ambitious, but offered no specific criticism of the proposed research. Peter was very upset, as was I, and informed me that he planned to return to England. Before leaving, I asked, what could you do to demonstrate the application of the DEM procedure to a specific problem? He suggested that he could demonstrate an application to the design of tunnel su supports. It would take 
$25,000 and about six months. The ever supportive Ken Lane of the US Corps of Engineers provided the funding. Slide six shows an oscilloscope screen photo of a setup that allowed the engineer to describe graphically a support problem on the screen, apply loads, etc., and develop an appropriate solution. Peter completed the report in approximately four months and returned to England to accept a position to establish a research group with the company Dames & Moore. We stayed in contact and in 1983 he agreed to return to the University of Minnesota as an associate professor. Slide 7 shows the completed Nine Mile Point power plant in Upper New York State. During excavation for Unit 2 around 1979, a fault was discovered in the foundation. Dames and Moore, the general consultant, was concerned that the fault may slip in the event of an earthquake and compromise the safe operation of the unit. I was invited to participate as a consultant to Dames and Moore. The manager was John Markham. John impressed me. He was an excellent manager. He also knew and admired Dr. Kundal. Peter conducted a DEM analysis of the fault issue. It was concluded that the fault posed no problem. Towards the close of the project, I told John of my thoughts about establishing a consulting group to build on the rock mechanics expertise at the UMN and the underground space expertise of both Sweden and Minnesota. Magnus had organized two international conferences, Rockstore 77 in 1977 and a longer event, Rockstore 80 in 1980, that described a wide variety of subsurface uses worldwide. I persuaded John and Magnus to meet me in Minneapolis in 1980. Maxwell of Pergamon Press and Vin Ryan, a contact of Magnus's, agreed to each provide $100,000 startup funding. The name Itasca, the true source, was agreed upon and Itasca Consulting Company started its 40-year journey in 1981. We all owe a great debt to these two wonderful colleagues. At the time, the University of Minnesota Rock Mechanics Program had just graduated its 20th PhD, Dr. Roger Hart. Mark Christensen was pursuing graduate studies in rock mechanics also, and he agreed to join. Several other students and faculty also joined the effort with enthusiasm. Concern for energy security and underground space faded when the OPEC embargo was lifted. Funding for underground space projects quickly dried up. Eventually, Magnus decided to return to Sweden and develop an Itasca office there. One final note. Itasca is now recognized internationally for the technological leadership. It is well positioned to take advantage of developments such as massively parallel processing, artificial intelligence, the Internet of Things, and other developments. To this observer, ITASC International Incorporated has clearly demonstrated that no one country and no one gender has a corner on intelligence and ability. It is this feature of Triple I that must be preserved future success will then be assured. I trust that you have found this very compressed account of the past 40 years to be of interest, and I hope Itasca continues to bring in the kind of people that have always allowed me to walk into their office unannounced, interrupt their train of thought, smile, and then present them with a problem, and even later, show me their proposed solution. Thank you very much for an enjoyable 40 years and here's to an equally successful continuation.